Hello, everybody. Welcome again to another Frequently Asked Question Friday. Uh, today we have, um, I think, second time on the yes, second on the, time on the show, uh, Christian Menen Meneses. Meneses. All right. If I say that enough, I'll get it. Um, Christian's an attorney. Been here about a year and a half now. Yeah, a year. And a half. Okay. Uh, Anyway, your topic today you wanted to talk about uh, was what questions people should ask insurance companies when they're shopping around. Is that right? Yes, either when you're shopping around or just inquiring into your coverage. I know um, your term expires and then you need to renew it. And I think it's one of the most thing, important things you need to ask. Um, is it, m most people are kind of confused about what all is covered and what's not, right? Yes, exactly. Like we have a lot of people come in and tell us to go, oh, I'm fully covered. But fully covered doesn't really mean fully covered, does it? Exactly. Yeah, we have a lot of times that uh, that happens and a lot of people are left, you know, without coverage. Okay. So I guess give us some examples of, of things people need that they, uh, you know, a lot of times they don't get that we see all the time. Okay. Well, in Texas, um, everyone is required to have liability insurance. Really, the only thing this does is protect you in case you are sued. Uh, so this doesn't, you know, cover your vehicle, your damages, any of your injuries. So what you need to get is um, there's collision, there's comprehensive, there's PIP coverage, and then there's UMUIM coverage. These are all the additional ones that we recommend you get. Okay, and we'll go through them in just a second. But uh, I think there's one more coverage that we see a lot of times people don't have and that is lots of people now are financing their cars for like seven eight years and as soon as they drive the car off the lot they obviously they lose some value then yes. and then their car depreciates faster than they can pay it off so what happens when they're in an accident and, and somebody goes to say okay we're going to pay you full value for, for your car what what happens then uh, then you're left, left in the negative. So what you need then is a gap coverage. Okay. And that'll make up the difference between how much your car is depreciated and um, what you still owe. What you still owe. Okay. All right. So let's go through the other ones and uh, briefly. Uh, so the first one was what? Collision? Collision. Okay. This covers you when pretty much when you hit something or when you, you're hit by someone else. Uh, this will help cover the repair costs for your vehicle or in the alternative, if the repair costs are uh, higher than the value of your vehicle, it will they will just pay you for the value of your vehicle. Okay. And what about comprehensive? Comprehensive pretty much covers anything else. Uh, examples of that would be like hail damage, maybe some flood damage, things like that. Uh, pretty much when you something happens to your car, but it's not that you hit something. Um, all right, what about PIP? PIP is called a personal injury protection. This will help you cover your medical costs as well as um, any lost um, lost wages. All right, and what about, uh, isn't there something kind of like that too called MedPay? Yeah, MedPay, it's almost the same thing. It just doesn't mm -hmm. help with the lost wages. Okay, and, and those are both no-fault insurance, right? Yes, sir. So it doesn't matter who, whose fault it was, you can uh, you can recover. Recover. Okay. Um, all right, and uh, finally, uh, UM and UIM. Yes, uh, UM stands for under, uninsured motorist. This happens when someone else hits you and they don't have any coverage. Uh, so then your own insurance would kick in. Then there's also UIM, which stands for underinsured motorist. Uh, and this happens when the other person hits you and your damages go beyond what their coverage is. For example, if they only have liability, but you have uh, more expenses than that, more medical bills, things like that, uh, then after you recover from their insurance, then uh, your UIM would kick in after that. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah. Is there specific questions they should ask their insurance company when it's time to renew or if they're switching to another carrier, are there specific questions they need to ask? Yes. Uh, well, always inquire what coverage you currently have or what coverage you're about to get. I know a lot of people, uh, they just go by price. 
um, that's not the best way to go at it. Uh, just because it's the cheapest doesn't mean you know that you're you're going to be covered. So mm -hmm. inquire into what actual coverage uh, you have. Uh, one thing that we didn't talk about also is car rentals. Oh um, right. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's talk about car rental coverage. Yeah. So that will um, help cover your costs uh, for the car rental if you are hit by someone else or if something happens to your car and it's in the shop. Uh, your insurance will help you uh, get a car rental and they'll cover that cost. All right. So, and that's something we see a lot too, is people get hit by somebody who doesn't have any insurance and then they, they don't have car rental insurance. So now they got to put their car in the shop and there's nobody to reimburse them for a car rental. So they just got to pay it out of their own pocket, right? Correct. Yes. All right. Um, all right. And then what if, what if your agent says something like, okay, you'll be fully covered this way. Would you just stop at that and go, oh, okay? No, I would inquire, um, how am I fully covered? For example, say, what if someone who is not insured hits me? Am I covered then? Um, or do I have coverage beyond that? You know, also, um, like the PIF is something I, I highly recommend mm -hmm. uh, because this covers for your medical costs and um, it's you can obtain it pretty fast. Sometimes your cases take a long time and if you have PIP coverage, it helps you get some funds while your case is ongoing. And you can get that in addition to the liability pay that you're going to get from the adverse. Yes. And they, they can't raise your premiums for collect, for collected PIP, right? Because it's no fault. Correct. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, you know, they really should, when they say, well, what do you mean full coverage? They ought to go in there with this list and go, okay, well, do I have collision? Do I have comprehensive? course there'll be liability because you have to have that do I have PIP or do I have med pay uh, do I have UM do I have UIM do I have car rental and so they should specifically go there and just say do I have each one of these am I covered yes. for all these things yes and it'll be certain amounts that you're covered for each uh, there'll be for example the, the minimum will be 30 60 uh, then they can go up from there and I think people should be aware also that uh, the state law says that they have to actually sign something if they want to reject uh, PIP, right? And they have to sign something if they want to reject UM coverage? Yes. Yeah, you have to sign something if uh, if they don't make you sign something you're, that when you're rejecting it, uh, then you automatically have it included in your coverage. Because okay. we see that a lot over here, right? Where people say, oh no, my carriers are my agent says, I don't have that. And we say, okay, well, get us get us the rejection form. And they can't produce it, right? Yes. So that means they got PIP now and they got you in? Yes. Right? Okay. So if that should happen to anybody and you think you don't have PIP or you don't have UM and the agent tells you, the carrier tells you, that's okay, let me see my form where I rejected it. And if they can't produce that form, you're automatically covered. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, anything else we need to cover on your topic? No, I think that's it in regards to the questions for your auto insurance. All right. Well, short and simple today. Um, I got time for a few announcements here. Uh, I want to remind everybody about our scholarship. Uh, you need to submit a 600 word essay. Uh, you can go to our scholarships page on our website. Um, and the topic is what changes can be made to decrease distractions with technology and motor vehicles. So we all we all know how people uh, they've added a lot of technology that increases in distractions in your car. What technology can be used to decrease uh, distractions? Um, so all you got to do is write a 600 word essay, submit it. Uh, the drawing will be or the, the will pick well the. Contest is over, I believe, December 1st. Is that right? December 1st. And shortly thereafter, we'll pick out a winner. Um, first place is $2,500. Uh, second place is $1,500. Third place is $1,000. So, you know, if any of you guys are going to school and you need money for books or tuition or rent or anything else, uh, we actually make the check payable to you, not, not to your school. Um, so you can use it any way you want. Um, 
and again, again, you know, uh, I really encourage people from around this area to uh, to submit their their essays. We get a lot of people entering from the East Coast and the West Coast, New York, California, um, and lots of times our winners come from there. So, you know, I sure would like to give it to somebody in Texas or somebody in South Texas. So. Uh, it's easy to do. If you know anybody who needs scholarship money, tell them, tell them to go online and, and enter the, um, the scholarship. Uh, next, um, we are sponsor, sponsoring Lucha Kaboom, uh, which is a, uh, for those that don't know, it's, it, you've seen those, those uh, Mexican wrestling guys with the, the funny face mask things. Um, it's kind of like WWE in the United States, uh, but that's the, the rest of them they do in Mexico. And so we're going to be sponsoring it. It's going to be um, uh, right around Dia de los Muertos. Um, I, I guess it's the day after Dia, Dia de los Muertos. During the, during the festival. Okay, during the festival. There's a, a festival, for those of y'all don't know, uh, kind of like Halloween that's going on every year. Um, anyway, this year it's going to be uh, October 27th, which is Saturday, be downtown. And so Herman Herman is sponsoring that, and we're going to buy some tickets, and we are going to give those away on social media. So uh, stay tuned to our channels for your chance to win some free tickets. Um, lastly, I want to talk about voting again one more time. Uh, remember, the last day to register is October 9th, so we are – what, 18 days away, uh, 18 days away from the last day to register. And I'd hate for you guys to try to register on the 9th and then find out you don't have the right piece of ID or some other problem, and all of a sudden now you can't vote. So please try to go uh, register now, and I will put another link on, on this uh, on our Facebook page. Y'all can go check and see whether or not you're, you are uh, registered. Um, don't forget, um, the Republicans are literally, uh, purging voter rolls uh, using it as an excuse, you know, you didn't vote last election, you didn't vote the election before that, or just whatever excuse they can find, they're using that to purge the voter rolls and it's disproportionately affecting Democrats. So in addition to gerrymandering all the districts and using voter suppression tactics, they're now using this, which is, well, let's just kick them off the voter roll so they can't vote. So don't just assume that you're registered to vote. Go check, make sure. Um, remember the Supreme Court of the United States, let Ohio do this and kick a bunch of people off, off, uh, off their uh, voter rolls. The last election in 2016, Supreme Court said that was constitutional. So, you know, these, these people will use whatever trick in the book they can to, to win elections. So don't assume you're registered. Go double check. Uh, and if you're not, if you got purged for some reason, you got time to get your proper ID and everything you need to, to go register. Um, early voting starts October 22nd. It'll be through November 2nd, and Election Day is November 6th. Uh, and what we're going to do at Herman Herman to... Um, uh, encourage you guys to go vote is if you'll come by here after you vote when you vote you'll get a little sticker that says I voted and you can put it on or you don't have to put it on you can bring it on the little thing they give you but just bring that in here uh, and we will, we're will we going to give a swag bag which is a Herman Herman bag of stuff we give to our clients uh, document holders uh uh, bag clips, uh, uh, keychains, key uh, t-shirt, uh, um, got a few other things there. But anyway, we're going to get a swag bag together for everybody. Uh, so anybody that votes, just bring that by, and we're going to do this during early voting and on election day, but we really want to do early voting to make sure there's no problems. But bring that by here. Not, not only will you get a swag bag, you will get a chance to win a $250 gift card. So we'll, we're just going to pull that uh, at random, and whoever wins, wins. But you'll be entered in the drawing if you come by here with your I Voted sticker. So uh, good luck to everybody, and let's make this the biggest turnout we've ever had for an election. Um, I think, you know, 
the stakes are really, really high in this election, and everybody knows why. So um, please go vote. Please make sure you register to vote. And uh, I guess we'll see you next Friday. Same time, same channel. So we'll see.